Hey everyone, it's Mike Sullivan. Thanks for joining me. With me today is Jonathan Kay, a returning expert from Grasshopper. Jonathan, thanks for joining us today. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, happy to be back as always. Um, so per usual, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about just this guerrilla marketing and uh, why brand perception is so important. And I'm going to try and take a different spin on it in hopes that it's helpful to you guys as always. And so I'm going to recommend three basic things to you. The first thing that I want to talk about is um, I think it's really important to do things that your audience can relate to. Um, and so what I'm going to say is that's not newsletters. Don't write newsletters, right? Newsletters are essentially you saying, here's the information that we want to communicate to you. And here, just take it. It's kind of like forcing information down people's throat instead of giving them something and talking about something with them that they think is interesting, right? So newsletters are, are spam. You're spamming your paying users, right? So I hate newsletters. Uh, but Jonathan, what does that have to do with uh, doing something that relates to your audience, right? So I'll give you an example. So at Grasshopper, we stopped doing newsletters and instead put our money and our time into videos like Entrepreneurs Can Change the World, which I know a lot of you have seen. And uh, the one we did that was a spoof of Jay-Z and Alicia Keys, the, uh, uh, you know, the... Um, the entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneur state of mind, right? And we started a, the first all Twitter petition to the president to get a National Entrepreneur's Day because that was important to us. And we knew that that was important to our audiences as, as well, right? So you know what? We didn't send them all of our events and our most recent blog posts and a newsletter, but we did something on a, on a mutual turf, right, on social media that we knew that we were interested in. You and something that we were interested in and something that we knew you were interested in, right? Um, and that's real. And I, and I think another great example, hate the president or love the president, it's irrelevant, but every year President Obama fills out a, a March Madness, right? A, two, you know, a, a national uh, men and women's bracket, right? And he does that because he knows, right? He's smart that he knows that in the United States, so many people fill it out, so many people fill out this bracket that it legitimately decreases work productivity. It is a fact. It is actually a fact that because you can stream the tournament and it happens at work, everyone does pools for $5, everyone does their picks. It's so big that it decreases work productivity. And so he gets involved in it and he puts it on ESPN because he knows that his audience, right, like you guys, um, you can relate to that. And that's really powerful. So try and find a way to incorporate that into your business. The second thing is, is you want to be in the same places that your audience, that your that, that your audience is, right? Um, and it's kind of just taking the the whole idea of putting a face behind your brand, really stupidly literally, right? You 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 want people to associate a real human, um, and, and and you know real human things with your brand. And so for us, uh, we founded the Bar Camp Tour, and and it, it, it's an opportunity for us to travel around to ten different cities in the United States and meet entrepreneurs and buy beers with them and just talk to them and just hang out with them, right? And that's unbelievable because now if they see one of our ads or they see one of our more stale, staunch, traditional marketing methods, their brain will immediately associate that with, oh, I saw Stephanie Bulls or I saw Jonathan Kay, you know, in Portland at this bar camp and it was awesome. <coughs> so really like find a way to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, one tool that I'd recommend is startupdigest.com. Um, they're in a lot of the major cities and um, it's one of the few people I actually allow to spam me because every Monday morning they send me a list of all the events in my area that are going on. Um, and they weed out the bad ones and put in the good ones. Um, and it's an unbelievable resource to just find places to meet your audience. Especially if, the, if that audience is um, in the startup community. So I know someone's out there thinking, the last thing that I want to do is get out there and talk to my audience, right? Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm a designer, I'm a hacker, um, you know, <coughs> talking to people and meeting the people um, and talking on a video like this is not what I like doing. And that's fair. And I, and, 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 and I respect that. And so what I would challenge you is I would say, find another way to put a face behind a brand, right? Um, people that you would normally want to meet, why don't you send them a handwritten note? Or yeah, why don't you just pick up the phone on Friday afternoon and call someone and just say hi and just see what comes from that phone call. Do something a little bit out of your comfort zone and something that's really personal and help create that like memorable relationship, right? Uh, but if you, don't, if you don't do something a little weird or something a little different, something memorable, um, it's going to be hard, right? You, you might not ever put the face behind the brand. 
And so the third thing, um, and and I know, and this is something that I preach all the time, but it's find a way to add value completely outside of your product. Um, and I'm comfortable talking about this twice because I think it's that important. Because again, um, successful businesses are the ones that sell experiences, not features, right? It's like when you think of Zappos, do they have better shoes than like the Bobs or the TJ Maxx in your town? Not at all, right? <clears throat> but you associate Zappos with being this fantastic, like magical creature that just, you know, a stork drops, drops off shoes on your doorstep, right? Um, and that's because they sell experiences. And, you know, if, if, if you take, you know, Mike here from, from MO.com as an example, on one of these interviews a couple of weeks back, I mentioned that um, my favorite candy was Sour Patch Kids, right? And, you know, who knows, a week later, I get a package on my desk literally full of Sour Patch Kids, which was unbelievable, right? Like, if you think about MO as a site, as a product, their value add to me as, a, as an expert is to provide a platform to evangelize my content and to help my brand and to, you know, raise some awareness. And they do that. They are not supposed to send me candy. They're not supposed to, uh, you know, help feed all the people in my office. And they did, right? And um, that's the reason every time Mike e emails me, I drop what I'm doing, right? Um, and, and so, you know, just start to associate those examples and see what you guys can do for your own brand. You talk about relating to your audience and a face behind the brand. And in an example close to home for you, Talk about where Grasshopper came up with the concept of, you know, we need a non-traditional role, an ambassador of Buzz. Let's get someone in here to, to really talk about our product or get people talking about our product. Yeah, it's actually a fantastic question. Um, so what happened was is about three or so years ago, Grasshopper realized that. So getting people to talk about your brand is really important. From a sales perspective, from a branding perspective, it's necessary to succeed. Um, and, and, and so they had tried PR firms, right? And they had tried in-house PR people. And, um, you know, the PR firms didn't understand our culture. And the PR people were so driven by numbers that they didn't build valuable relationships. And then we brought in a biz dev person and a salesperson. And again, they were so driven by numbers that they weren't building relationships. Um, and we had marketing folks, but, you know, not people they could get out there and talk. And finally, one of our founders, David Hauser, he just realized you know what? The real problem is, is that we're asking someone to focus exclusively on one of these areas. Let's instead bring in someone who can touch on all of them, right? And maybe they don't spend all their time on PR, but we realize that when you get out there and you build good relationships, good things come from that, right? And good things that might be press, that might be co-marketing, that might be someone tweeting about your brand. But the point is, is that the world we live in now, all of those things serve the function as PR. Right? If you think about why PR was so big, it's because that's how everyone got their information. And that's not the case anymore, right? So PR doesn't have to traditionally just be media outlets, right? It's things like this. It's us talking. Um, it's people talking about you, right? And now that people have this microphone to talk about you, um, it's kind of like everyone's the press, right? And, and, and that's something else I like to say because, you know, Joe Smith, who has a blog that 200 people follow, on some level, that's kind of working with the media, even though you might just be having a conversation with and helping an entrepreneur. And so essentially, they just realized they wanted a mashup of all these things, and they just found some crazy, energetic, insane person to do it. And that's pretty much it, man. <laughs>
uh, all I would say is just, you know, uh, make your brand about an experience, not a feature, not a price point. You know, the people who undercut 50 cents and add one feature, those aren't the people that win. Um, in my experience, it's the people who build a story and an experience around their brand and, you know, just get out there and, and find a way to do that. It's at the very least, it's more fun. <laughs>